Super Chef Princess in a forgotten era within the grandeur of Belle Fleur. There was a princess who answered to the name of Sarah. She was a bright little thing, loved and adored by everyone in the palace. But the most special thing about her was, she loved to cook. Things look amazing. Hmm, they taste amazing too. Yes, I know. In fact, Sarah would daydream about food all day. Are these edible? Your Highness. And she'd be thinking up recipes too. Princess, you're supposed to submit homework on the life cycle of bees. And? This is a recipe for a ginger lemon cake. <laughs> Oops! And one would probably find her only in... Where's Sarah? Hmm, the kitchens. Sarah, are you baking cookies? These aren't cookies, Father. These are coconut macaroons. The crispiness of the gently flaked coconut combined with the rich sweetness of milk and a hint of vanilla's lovely essence. Hmm, perfect. It's 12 a.m., Sarah. Who are these for? Um, Santa? Sarah would experiment with every spice and ingredient she could lay her hands on, aiming for perfection. Everyone marveled at her dishes, and over time, she grew into a marvelous cook. Mmm, delicious. Maybe I should retire. Never. You were my first and forever teacher. One evening, however, she decided to visit her favorite soup stall. Madam Potts, your highness, are you closing down? Huh? Yes, I don't have the money to run the shop anymore. The ingredients are far too costly. Oh. But I suppose I can make one last bowl for my favorite customer. As Madam Potts began to prepare the soup, Sarah watched her enthralled. Mmm, the smell of ginger and herbs are so fresh. Even the way she carefully chops the vegetables with so much love. Here you go. Mmm, I can feel the warmth of the soup spreading through me. It's a shame you're closing down. It's not just me, love. Mr. Buns the baker, Miss Berry Blossom, the tea shop owner, and even Chef Rigatoni. They're all shutting down. Sarah was horrified. That night, while in the kitchens, her mind was in a twirl. With your skills, maybe you should forget the crown and start a restaurant. That's it. That's what I'll do. What? You can't forfeit the crown. Oh, I'm keeping my crown all right, but I'll also start a restaurant. The next day, she got to work. She went around hiring all the owners who were closing down their shops and stalls. You'll be able to work without worrying much. Just focus on cooking, and I'll handle the rest. In no time, her new restaurant was up and running, and people flocked to it. Mmm, this is so good. I've missed your soups, Madam Potts. Oh, you should try Miss Berry Blossom's tea. It leaves you feeling so relaxed. They're enjoying our food. The restaurant's fame grew and spread throughout the lands. One day, a seemingly unruly group entered. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh! Oh dear, I'm so sorry about them. No, no, don't worry. Our motto is to serve every customer who's handsome, uh, hungry. Wonderful, then I'll take the chestnut soup. Within moments, their food was served. They ate it with relish. 
The nuttiness, this earthy flavor, it's so well crafted. Madame Potts does make the best soups. Mm-hmm, but that's made by the princess herself. The chef is a princess? Why, of course. The head chef of this fine establishment is our very own Bailey Fuse, Royal Highness Sarah. Oh, then I'd like to compliment her personally. He was shown into the kitchens where Sarah was rushing about. Are you Princess Sarah? Why, why yes. What may I do for you? You may keep very silent. If you scream, my men will destroy your village, your restaurant, and everything you hold dear. Who are you? Ever heard of the Fire Dough Bandits? They're the most treacherous bandits group there is. And I am their leader, Cobb. <gasps> Cobb? Like corn on the cob? <laughs> is that your real name? <sighs> Silence! He went on to demand a huge sum in exchange for the safety of the kingdom and its princess. Grr. Look, I get it. Kingdom's princess or no, losing your restaurant is a huge deal to a chef. Trust me, I was one. You were a chef? Not to brag, but a pretty good one. So what will you do, princess? Sarah's mind worked fast. She didn't plan on putting everyone in danger. Fine, I'll concede to your terms if you defeat me in a cooking battle. A cooking battle? Yep. If I win, you leave my kingdom alone forever. I don't have to listen to you. There's no honor among thieves. And what about a chef's honor? If you're so good, a cooking battle should be easy peasy. Unless you're lying and you're the type who burns an omelet. Fine. One cooking battle and that's it. But if I win, I take your restaurant, the village, and all the gold I desire. Hmm. Now, neither the king nor the people were alerted about this deal. Sarah didn't want to scare anyone. She practiced hard at her skills for days. Why aren't I getting this right? I need to win. Maybe I need a break. She went out for a walk that evening and chanced upon Cobb, relaxing by the stream. Hey, princess, here to admit defeat? As if. Are those your ingredients? Yep, but they're for my beautiful eyes only. <sighs> it's your hands that'll need to do the cooking. Oh, they'll cook. And when? Please, when you lose, I'll make you a pot of chestnut soup to go. Manapots told me how much you loved it. Your soup tastes very similar to my dear mother's. She loved cooking and was the reason I followed the path of a cook. I was a renowned chef known throughout the lands. But one day, a vengeful critic decided to ruin my name and reputation. Oh, oh no. My real name isn't Cobb, it's Crestwater. <gasps> chef Crestwater? I've heard about you. Your recipes are top notch. No one would work with me after that. Oh, Cobb. Oh, well, things got a little heated down the line, so I turned towards a different side of life. Stealing from people? Threatening them? Exactly. And now if you'll excuse me, I have a battle to win. Sarah hadn't expected Cobb to have such a side to him. How strange people are. <sighs> I, too, have a kingdom to save. The day of the battle arrived. Hmm. I've trained under the best chefs worldwide. Good luck beating me. We'll see about that. The battle commenced. As Sarah cooked, Cobb glanced over. What kind of ordinary dish does she plan on making? <laughs> Onions, tomatoes, in go the beans. Lovely. Finally, the time was up. To keep things fair, the judges didn't know whose dish belonged to which chef.
The first dish consisted of spicy fettuccine noodles simmered in the sweetness of coconut milk. The judges took their bites. Hmm, delicious. The next dish was polenta and beans in a rich creamy tomato sauce. This is so amazing. Wow, hmm. Once they'd eaten their fill, it was finally time for the results. Sarah's heart pounded. Would her dish be good enough to save her entire kingdom? Both dishes were amazing. However, we've all agreed that the dish made of polenta and beans is the one that won our hearts. What? No! <gasps> yes! Sarah's heart leapt with joy. She bounded through the crowd in happiness. Her dish had won the battle. Cobb, however, was furious. He bellowed at the princess. How is this possible? I saw you using nothing but plain beans and polenta. Polenta is just cornmeal. You must have cheated. Cheated? My dish consisted of high quality ingredients and has earned me great recognition in other lands. So why don't you taste my dish before assuming that I cheated? And so Cobb took the ladle to his lips. How stunned he was. The ingredients that he had so rudely scorned now formed a medley of flavors in his mouth. Hmm, this texture, it's perfectly silky and rich. And this taste, how did you attain such finesse? With what intention did you make your dish? Obviously with the intention to win. I practiced my dish with that thought too, but was never happy with the result. I realized my aim as a chef is to nourish my people with the best food possible, food which will leave them happy and healthy. In other words, you cook with love. I've forgotten what that's like. <sighs> well, a deal's a deal, princess. I shall take my men and leave your kingdom alone. You've earned it. Wait, what if I help you start your restaurant here? You would do that? Mm-hmm. You can be a chef again. Cobb was beyond touched. With tears in his eyes, he agreed to the kind offer. And so, the kingdom was saved from the terrible fire dough bandits. Cobb, I mean Chef Cresswater, soon opened up a new restaurant in another part of the kingdom. Here you go. Uh-uh-uh. Customers must feel welcomed. Let's try again with a smile. Hmm, here ye go. Uh, yeah, better. They would occasionally help each other out. Need a hand to help your beautiful eyes? Haha, <laughs> they're a bit busy. Looking at what? You. Mm-hmm. And so, Sarah's name spread far and wide, and Chef Cresswater's reputation began to grow again, too. It just shows that with determination, bravery, and a little bit of culinary magic, anything is possible.